All right, guys, project of the day. We're going to show you how to reupholster this antique settle. It's an LNJG Stickley number 232, and we'll show you step by step how to build the seat frame, add springs, apply deck padding, foam, and even the leather upholstery. Stick around, we'll jump right into it. This is the 232 as it came to us. We've got three loose cushions. And this may have been just exactly what a customer requested from a professional upholster. The cushions are fairly well done, but really they just look like modern sofa cushions. And so it's entirely inappropriate for an antique arts and crafts piece, in my opinion. So we're going to remove the jute webbing and start over with an ash hardwood frame and a spring base. Beneath the fabric cover, there's a little bit of natural cotton batting, a burlap barrier, and then below that, we just have synthetic jute webbing. We'll get started on the many staples that secure this fabric cover. So using the fence to set the width of the half lap was really helpful so that we can have two of these mid-span notches and we know the width will be exactly the same. So this is a great way to build seat frames. The thing I really like about it is you just get your outside dimensions that you want for the frame and you just simply cut your pieces exactly to that length and then it's just a matter of cutting those half lap joints and dropping the parts together. I like these parts to fit snug, but not so tight that you can't get them together once there's a little glue on. One clamp will just pinch the long rails together to close up the shoulder joint for these short middle pieces. And then we'll add the main clamp to apply the real pressure. This frame is actually longer than my workbench, so we'll just pop a level on there as a straight edge and make sure that we're staying nice and flat as we glue this up. A little work roller stand can help support that in the right position. So we've got our frame all built and we actually took some time to round over the sharp edges to make sure nothing would interfere with the upholstery. And we made some notches in the corners so that it would fit into the frame of the sofa. And now we're just going to extend the lines on this layout we've made as to where the zigzag springs will go. We'll space them every three and three eighths inch apart. You can space them a little further with uh, a settle application if needed, but uh, we're going to shoot for about four zigzag springs under each opening. And we'll just need to bend the ends of the zigzag springs nice and slow. A little bit more. Okay, once they look like that, you're good to go.
So we're using these BW clips for the springing wire and special pair of pliers from CS Osborne. This is a CS Osborne number 522 specifically made for these clips. If you just set the clip inside the pliers and work that down around both the springing wire and the zig spring and then just go ahead and close the clip tightly and when you manipulate the wire side to side it should act on the spring so you shouldn't get any slippage there. That looks good so we'll move down the line. Okay, so we have our spring base all built and the cross wires are installed with the special clips and now it's time to add this deck padding. It looks a little bit like thick, dense batting. It's a polyester material, but it does a good job at padding that initial layer right over the springs just so you don't feel any of the spring pressure when you're sitting on the couch. And so sometimes you have to attach these with hog rings. For instance, if you don't have a wooden frame that you can access, we've done that in the past, but since we've got this nice ash hardwood frame, we'll just staple it in place. Okay, so just regular fine wire upholstery staples and we'll get that installed. When it comes time to size your seat frame, just leave a little bit extra room between the seat frame and the settle, especially on the side here. Otherwise it'll just be too hard to wrangle that cushion into position. So we were really hoping to get away with a full four inches of foam on top of that deck pad. But when we mocked it up with two inches of 1834 and two inches of 1818, it just gives the sofa a little too tall and upright of a feel. And it's actually a little firmer than we're looking for. That coupled with the fact that we know that once we add the spray glue and the leather cover, it'll only get firmer. We're going to mix things up a little bit. The new plan will be to go with a one inch layer of the 1834 and two one inch layers of the super soft 1818 foam. Okay, we're just going to add that second layer of foam. This one's 1818 soft foam. And this layer will also be held about an inch back from the front of the cushion. Now this top layer of 1818 foam will want to leave a little bit wider so we can bullnose over the front. Okay, so here's that third layer of foam little waterfall or kind of bull nose over the front edge. We've left that little recess for it to sit and be flush with the wood frame. So it's nice if you can start developing the shape of your cushion with that top layer of foam. Makes it a lot easier when it comes time to sew and make up the leather cover. So we did another test fitting and we're finding that we're going to need to create a slight taper here on the side of the foam just so that the corners fit nicely between the legs and there's no bunching or wrinkling in the finished cushion. Once in a while you can get away with using a double bladed electric turkey knife. Sometimes if the foam is too soft it's a little hard to cut but we'll give it a shot. Looks like we got two of the layers and missed the middle one. And that'll be just fine for our purposes. We have a full layer of high loft Dacron batting going over the sides yet. Okay, now we're gonna add the high loft batting. This is a 10 ounce polyester batting, a Dacron. 
And this is a 13 yard roll to give you a frame of reference. Just get some large yardage. You won't regret having some of this on hand. If you do many upholstery projects, you'll certainly go through it. Okay, so we've added more spray glue and now for the batting layer, you want that to waterfall all the way down the front and even cover the wood frame in this case. Every application is going to be different. Just go by your mock-up and fit it the way that your mock-up tells you it should look. Okay, that's looking good. We'll add the end panels. With spray glue on both surfaces, we'll just add the batting on the sides. So here's a final test fitting of our cushion with the batting installed. And it looks really good. No further adjustments needed. We'll just want to make sure that the seam line of the leather cushion falls just inside the front legs. I just wanted to quickly show how this full layer of 10 ounce batting along the side of the cushion has kind of visually filled this space between the foam and the side rail of the frame. And that's going to be perfect for our situation if we were to try to fill that space completely with the wooden frame or the firm foam, it would just be too hard to wrangle this big cushion into the seat frame. So now we're at one of the most important steps in the whole process, and that's the patterning and cutting of the leather to make the cushion cover. And we've taken our measurement from seam to seam, and it's basically 66 and 7 8 inch. And we'll show you the adjustments we have to make on that number. We have to add in a seam allowance, and then subtract a factor for leather stretch. So here are how the numbers look for the large seat cushion top panel. We had a raw length measurement of 66 and 7 8. We add to that a half inch seam allowance on either side and then subtract out a factor for leather stretch. My rule of thumb is subtract a quarter inch for every 10 inches of panel length. That brings us to a finished cut size of 66 and 3 16 on this long dimension. So we'll need to get an accurate circumference measurement. So just put your tape on one inch where it intersects the edge of the wood frame. Wrap it around and do the same on the other side. With a little bit of light compression of the batting, we're getting a raw number of 33 inches. We'll have to make an adjustment to that to subtract some to account for leather stretch. Now on the shorter dimension, we had a raw dimension of 33 inches. That includes one inch wrap under on either side. Of course, there's no seam allowance to account for on this dimension because we're actually just stapling it down. Now we'll subtract out that quarter inch for every 10 inches of panel length and arrive at the final cut number of 32 and 3 16 Make use of a little piece of poster board under the side of your cushion and make sure to extend that poster board one inch beyond the wood frame to account for wrap under. And from there, you can just go ahead and trace out the shape of your cushion. What we'll do is we'll cut this to our line and we'll use this as the actual template for cutting the side panels. Cut the template right to the line and you'll just use this template to cut out the leather shapes for the side of the cushion. Don't account for any further leather stretch on this side panel. We've already accounted for the one inch wrap under, so this will be the actual shape of the side pieces. On these smaller pieces, I think templates make a lot of sense and you're not going to waste much poster board. Just use a leather marking pen. It's nice because it leaves a clear line, but yet it's easily removable. It's likely that the shape of the template will be different at the front and back, so be sure to label the front edge. And when you lay things out, lay out one end panel this way and the adjacent end panel this way. That way you'll get matching left and right with the shape at the right side. This leather panel is so large we had to roll two carts together and make kind of a mega station but I wanted to share one quick tip that I have learned to use time and time again. When I first started in leather upholstery I used to pattern everything. Every piece would get a poster board template and it's great for the side panels that have a shape or something special about them but on these large panels there's really no need to template it. Just use a thick piece of poster board and you can, this will be reusable for you. All it has to have is a square edge. Put it on your mark, establish that square edge, and then just extend it with a long piping ruler. And it's just a matter of 
cutting out your parts. That's it. That's all we need for this upholstery cover is just the one large rectangular panel and a matching pair of end pieces. So the sewing on that, as you can imagine, is very limited. Most of the job for the upholstery on this settle is patterning and getting everything the right size. When it comes time to go up to the sewing machine, the work's almost done. Just staple your end panels to the top panel with a little plier nose stapler. That's a great tool to have in the upholstery shop. Keep your staples up in the seam allowance and staple it all the way, stem to stern. Now that the end panel is all stapled up to the top panel, we can go ahead and get a blind stitch going. We'll hold our threads back for a couple stitches and give it a back tack. Doesn't really matter what type of foot you use with this. I just had a zipper foot on, so that'll work fine. A standard piping foot would also work just as well. So we'll go ahead and stitch all the way around. Just using our fingers as a thickness gauge here to make sure we don't sew in an extra layer. This is just simple two layers with a blind stitch. And here we're just coming around to the other side to finish up that blind stitch. And another good back tack at this end. Should wrap things up. And then we'll just top stitch down to reinforce that seam and give it a nice little decorative effect. The top stitch, you do want to gently spread the seam open. And the biggest challenge with this is just the amount of excess bulk that's on the left side of the machine here. So just kind of managing the friction as you go. Otherwise, it's pretty similar to top stitching any rocking chair or typical leather cushion. If you want to see a more detailed explanation of this sort of top stitched cushion, look for the video I did on a Stickley 319 antique rocking chair. I'll link it up in the description box. Anytime you're top stitching, you do want to make sure that the seam allowance is turned towards the boxing side, the ends in this case. And we'll give it a good back tack. With the cover sewn up, we'll just go ahead and loosely slip it into place and flip this cushion over so that we can start centering up the cover on the frame. Okay, so with center marks on the cover and a center mark indicated on the wooden frame, we know right where to start. 
we're just using some 3 8 inch fine wire upholstery staples, 22 gauge in this case. And then we'll spin the thing around and we'll do the same thing on the other side. It's really important to start with those center spots. Um, otherwise, by the time you staple down to one end, you really could be off your mark. So not only do we have our center mark, but we also have a reference line that we've marked in Sharpie pen all the way around the perimeter of the frame. And that's just one inch from the outside edge. So if we can manage to get our center notch on the leather cover right to our center mark, we'll be in good shape. And then we'll look at the ends. Then along each edge, we'll set a couple temporary staples, knowing that these may be adjusted as needed. So with such long spans that we're dealing with, sometimes even though we have center tacked down, uh, it's nice to just kind of split the difference a few times until you're comfortable with the distance that you're spanning. And that's getting pretty manageable there. Okay, so now our chore is to button down the corner. We've basically stapled all along the front and back edges here. And so you kind of want to plan how that corner is going to button down. What I've done is stapled all the way to the corner so that the side leather can kind of fold over and finish the corner that way. And we'll just keep working the staples along the side, drawing to our pull line. Helps if I can sight down the side of the cushion and make sure I'm not developing any wrinkles. So what I'll do to button down the corner here is come right to the corner from the front. And then we'll be able to just fold over any extra material at the side. And we'll button that down this way. We'll switch to a little longer half inch staples. To get one more right in there, a little dust cover, and this cushion should be done. One other little detail we'll take care of is to trim out the sides of the settle just with a little strip of leather to hide any of the wood frame that might otherwise be visible from the top side. So we'll just cut a strip of the same leather that we used, about an inch and a half wide, and we'll use that to trim out the frame of the settle. Just a little bit of contact cement on the leather strips here and we'll be able to trim out the frame. Anytime you're working with contact cement, you do want to let it tack over before you apply it. So we'll just use our strips to trim out this little space on the side of the seat frame and we'll put a couple inconspicuous staples in there. So this is what the cushion looks like when it's all finished on the top side. The leather came out really nice. It is a soft cushion. When you sit down on it, the springs have a little give to them. And with that soft foam and the Dacron on top, it's a pretty forgiving surface. So we're real pleased with how the cushion came out. Only thing we have left to do now is just add the dust cover underneath. So just folding the edges under and tacking down that dust cover. And always remember to label the front on the underside with a grease pencil. Well, here's a look at the end of the finished cover and you can kind of see the effect that that top stitching detail has. It gives it a little bit of a shape to the side of this cushion cover. 
Gives it a little bit of form, and I like that about it, but it's a lot less bulky than a full 5 seconds inch piping. So that's something that everybody has to decide what they'd like to have, whether they want a blind seam, a top stitch seam, or piping along the side. This single top stitch look is one that I'm using time and time again on my antique upholstery projects and it's just a really easy way to go and it's one that we get fitting nicely into the wooden frames and so if you're just starting out in upholstery this would be the one I would suggest for the sides of your seat cushions. If you choose a thread color that closely matches the leather it's a nice understated look. The cushion slips real nicely into the wooden frame and I think improves the look and certainly improves the comfort of this old settle. What's left to do? Well, maybe just a light wax treatment on the wooden frame and add some throw pillows. Okay guys, that was the whole process on how to reupholster your antique L and JG Stickley settle. I hope that some small part of this video was helpful for you and the projects that you round up in your own shop. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.